Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week and new Lego ideas entries as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. First of all, my sincere apologies for not publishing a news show last week. Actually, in between recording uh, the German version and then the English version in between Rivendell uh, arrived, so... I got a bit overly excited and I don't know, what what can I say? <laughs> Rivendale just had higher priority in my Lego time in quotes. So I had a ton of fun with the set, but unfortunately, yeah. And then I kind of woke up on Saturday. I had this amazing ride through the week with Rivendell, which personally I think is the best Lego set I've ever built. And um, then I decided, okay, Saturday, maybe it's a bit too late now because Tuesday is already around the corner. So long story short, no news um, show last week. Again, my apologies, but we are back now and we have a ton of interesting stuff to talk about. So first of all, a couple of announcements. As always, we will start with Blue Bricks as we do this in alphabetical order. The German manufacturer over here and here they have what they call the compact car cabriolet cabriolet i guess um whatever you may call it um well obviously that's a golf one um they have created this one as a convertible is a two in one so technically for those of you who know this um history of volkswagen uh, golf cars there i mean obviously we had golf eight nowadays i think i'm not even one percent sure but anyhow, so the convertible did not exist for the number two. So they only had this for one. And so they produced these from, the, I think, end of the 90s, 1979 until 1993. So it has a very long lifespan because they skipped Golf 2 uh, as a convertible and moved um, directly then, I think, into Golf 3, uh, into the convertible as well. I think nowadays they're not even making these anymore. And nowadays, um, I think they just do a Beetle. A convertible, not 100% sure. Anyhow, back in the day, this was a joint venture between Volkswagen and Kaman um, and was manufactured in Osnabrück. That's in the state of Niedersachsen or Lower Saxony over here in Germany. They made almost 400,000 of these. And like I said, it had a very long manufacturing time of 14 years. So what Bluebricks has done here is created a set with 1,180 pieces. Mostly, as you can see in the color distribution map, mostly black. Um, obviously, we have to check or have to see how good the black color, black pieces are. Usually, with all the micro scratches that a lot of parts have coming out of China, um, this may not look too good. We have to have to see. Anyhow, it's an announcement at this point in time. It's designed by Anton. That's interesting because that's usually Bluebrick's designer for architecture. Not sure why he's doing cars now, but any anyhow, here you go. I think it's nice looking. It, like I said, it has two in one, so it has both, like say, convertible variants. It does not have a front um, front window. I mean, not by means of glass or trans clear pieces or trans clear panels, but instead it's just bricked, um, which I personally prefer because I think if you want to go down the road of trans clear pieces, you you need. A, a great quality and usually that is where the blue bricks pieces are lacking a little bit so i would rather prefer no trans clear pieces compared to uh, bad ones anyhow here you go golf one uh volkswagen um as a in a brick version with almost 1200 pieces and then blue bricks has again created or announced a new set for the western series um the 106851 they call it the coffin maker i mean it's literally a coffin maker this is actually interesting out of the what blue bricks calls the wild west series they haven't done much uh, in the last couple of months i mean if we look at let me just check wild west yeah they did the indian the western farm i think that was yeah this was in 2020 and then it was very silent they had this this uh, indian village here um in 2022 and um however for almost two years not much has happened here um, so that's that's I think great news and and as you can see and in, in going looking back most of these sets except with let's say uh, like a little bit of landscaping stuff um, was actually Bluebricks Pro. So in Bluebricks Special they had of course the Western Ford which was great the gold mine and then they had these three buildings. Um, actually, I built the blacksmiths, which was quite a nice building back in the day. Um, but um, yeah, not so many blue brick specials recently. As you can see, most of 
this is Bluebricks Pro made by Zingbao. So here we go back in Bluebricks special ter territory. Um, and yeah, here you go, 1,530 pieces. I think uh, it looks quite nice. It is very detailed. Uh, building techniques look look quite nice actually. At the same time, it should be relatively easy to build because it's not that large, right? I mean, Bluebricks has done much more complex sets. And uh, yeah, I over I look I like that's what I want to say. I like the design. Um, I think the the front part doing with two third uh, slopes is interesting never seen that before but i think yeah it looks it looks quite nice um here we go 1530 pieces set db estimates that it will be slightly below 1 to 2 kilograms um that basically means or it's a good sign if if you have uh, if you have a lot less grams uh, compared to pieces usually you have say on average in most sets you have like a, it's it's almost there's a good relation between piece count and and gram so if it goes below one a gram per piece, then usually it means, okay, this is a bit more detailed than uh, the average is. All right, let's move on because then we also have a couple of availabilities. First is what Bluebricks calls the logistics truck. Obviously, that's a European truck design. We're talking about the 105639. It's available for the 558 pieces. You're going to pay 30 bucks over here in Europe. That us always includes tax. And that's for, for five and a half cents a piece. And I think out of the four logistics trucks that they announced a couple of months ago, this is the last one. Or no, I mean, a couple of months ago is good. Um, these three were actually quite old. I think this fourth one is something that, that came later. And um, with that, we are moving on to the Big Blue Runner, obviously a design from a famous science fiction um, movie. And we're talking about the 105-505, 1,058 pieces and Bluebricks is asking for 43 bucks. That's 4.1 cents a piece. Can't complain about that price. It's mostly a dark blue. Actually, this color, what is this? This is dark blue, actually. That's interesting. So it's not blue, it's dark blue. Because here on the pictures, it looks more like a regular blue. But it seems to be dark blue. At least that is what the, um, the brick list is counting, right? Let me just double check. So we have here blue. Yeah. It thinks it's all dark blue. Interesting. The picture looks more like regular blue. So let's hope that this list is complete uh, or correct, I should rather say. Anyhow, let's move on. Quantum Colony Container Shuttle Vulture, the 105543, is now available as well for the 1,544 pieces. Blue Bricks is asking for 60 bucks. That's 3.9 cents a piece. I've talked about this set before, I think. And um, I think from Quantum Colony, let's, uh, let's do a quick check on this one. I think Quantum Colony, that means they are all available now. So the entire series. I think Bluebricks also did in the past a series that looks similar. Actually, one of the oldest uh, series that they have done, like back in 2018 when Bluebricks started, they did something that, that they called Main Base Mars. And um, they released these mostly in 2018, a few in 2019. And as you can see, I think that it's a very like hard fiction kind of set up and I guess you can combine the, these two series quite well. That's at least my guess, right? I'm not sure that, for instance, the landing platform, how well will this go uh, with the Quantum Colony landing platform? I think the scale looks similar. So if you're interested in that, there's a ton of availability of these sets um, over at Bluebricks. Obviously, Bluebricks ships only from here, from within Europe, but I think you can get these sets even outside of Europe. Anyhow, let's move on to Flying Police Car. Obviously, that is design that is highly influenced by the Fifth Element famous movie with Bruce Willis. Uh, 105, 598, the Flying Police Car. Bluebricks is asking for 48 bucks, including tax for the 1,219 pieces. And this time it is regular blue, not dark blue. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, here we go. Um, flying car. Actually, I would prefer the taxi because, yeah, I think that would be rather my cup of tea because they did also the fifth element taxi and this one even had um, had a two-in-one function, like including the broken roof. You remember this famous scene from the movie. Anyhow, let's move on to Kobe. And here we have, at least over here in Europe, 
Um, we have now a first price indication for the P51D Mustang uh, in the Top Gun Maverick version. So Kobe has done a lot of P51s over the years. I think the last one was, which one? This one here? Um, no, this one is not available anymore, but they did one also very recently, I think. Yeah, here, this is the one I was talking about. So this is the 5719. This one has been available for quite a while. It has 300 pieces and over here in Europe, you get it roughly around 24, 25 bucks. And, and now we have this Top Gun Maverick version, which in a nutshell is just a couple of, let's say, pieces different. And at least we have a price yet. No, no availability over here. And, and this one, however, as you can see, will be slightly more expensive. It will go beyond uh, 30 bucks. Um, Kobe itself actually is listing this one with 40 euros. Again, I do not have... Kobe is always complicated to get prices, for instance, for the US, but at least in Europe we have them. All right, and then we have a couple of price indications. Again, just Europe for a couple of upcoming 1x12 uh, sets from Kobe. So for the two, four, um, 347, this is a Citra DS19 from 1956. Um, we have a first price indication with 115 bucks for the 2,240 pieces, which is interesting. And then we have for the DS21 from 1968, so that's Kobe's 24348. For the 2,270 pieces, um, first indication over here is 115 bucks. I mean, if you think about it, right? I mean, this is just slightly above five cents a piece. This is this is great. I mean, Kobe is making great pieces. Obviously, I mean, you need to be a fan of these kind of cars, of old Citroëns, old French cars. But yeah, here you go. And also, we have the DS19, the convertible version. This is an executive version. And so it, it will be a bit, a bit more pricey. Um, this one goes be slightly beyond six cents a piece, 136 bucks over here in Europe, 2,200 pieces. And um, then we have the DS19, uh, also in the executive edition, so not a convertible. And this is 2,474 pieces. I mean, that's quite a set, right? 143 bucks, 5.8 cents a piece. Um, by the way, that's always euros. So for all of you who are big fans of old French cars, four different 1x12 cars, two executives, two regular editions. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. All of these can be expected. I guess you've seen this already on some of these pictures. Um, I think we can expect them around April, May timeframe. And that is also true for the uh, Opel Manta. So Opel that was back in the day General Motors um, over here in Europe. Um, as many of you may know, we're interested uh, Opel actually does not no, does not uh, belong to GM any longer uh, for, for a couple of years I think it was sold to a French car maker anyhow back in the day it was still GM this is an Opel Manta GT from 1974 24349 uh, by Kobe it has 1940 pieces and we have a first price um, from Europe a first price indication of around 115 bucks 5.9 cents a piece really looking forward to these getting released um, and I, my sincere apologies for not having better picture material at this point in time. These are basically screenshots out of the Kobe catalog. Obviously, we have to wait a bit more until we get better pictures. And speaking of such, we already have better picture material for the new LEGO sets. So LEGO has announced finally, I mean, rumors and leaks have been out for weeks now. I mean, rumors have been out for months, literally. Uh, we had a couple of leaked pictures in the last couple of days, like Facebook page and Hungary or something like that from Lego and some Lego stores and what have you. Anyhow, now we have official pictures and prices and even first uh, reviews. Um, so let's get started first with the 77015 the Temple of the Golden Idol um, going to be released April 1st. It has 1,545 pieces and Lego is asking for 150 bucks. That's uh, US dollars actually in this case, 9.7 cents a piece. So obviously that is from Raiders of the Lost Ark from the first Indiana Jones movie and it's the first scene. This is basically what... I don't know, introduced us into Indiana Jones' scene. So it's very famous and I'm and it's actually great. I always regret it. I'm a, I'm a huge, huge Indiana Jones fan and I always regret it that they never, you know, poked deeper into this whole theme like South America 
Um, but anyhow, um, nevertheless, it was quite nice. So Lego has done this rather large diorama. Obviously, they have the big boulder, the big rock um, thing that is, you know, rolling behind Indy while he's escaping after after taking the golden idol, which actually is in here. I think that's a new mold, isn't it? Um, yeah, what's to say? I mean, the great the minifingers are kind of great, especially Indy. I mean, he has printed legs, which I always like. He has a printed hip. You don't see this that often. So it's a very well done minifigure. You have his hat. Is this one dual molded? Um, looks really cool for sure. We have his opponent over here, with, um, whose name I forgot, the French guy. But, um, I mean, if you look at the set itself, I think it's beautifully done. However, it's 150 bucks, And as far as I can tell, you have like a million stickers in here, which is un especially unfortunate if you look at the signs uh, down here below. It seems even the Raider of the Lost Ark is a sticker. I mean, I had that when, when I built the, what's it called, Escape of the T-Rex, this 18 plus um, Jurassic World set that they did a year ago. Same thing. I mean, it's it's an 18 plus set. You know, it's for a famous old movie, and back in the day, of course, it was Jurassic Park one, and you know, then they put stickers in there. It's kind of kind of yeah. It's it's a bit it's a bit unfortunate, and I think if you look at the pictures, these are stickers. Anyhow, we have already a review out. I think Racing Brick, uh, Lego recognized fan media, I guess has already received one, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing even more reviews. I guess LEGO will, uh, similar, I mean, maybe not like Rivendell, but I guess LEGO will do a little bit of marketing here and provide these sets to recognize fan media. Anyhow, let's move on to the Fighter Plane Chai 77012, and um, also going to be available April 1st, 387 pieces, two minifigures for 35 bucks. So that's nine cents a piece. That's not perfect, but I mean, you get basically for 35 bucks, you get two amazing minifigures. You have the two Dr. Joneses here. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm this movie, this, um, of course, the third and uh, Indiana Jones movie was like my favorite movie for many years as a kid. I mean, I was a huge, I mean, you had, you know, you had James Bond and, and Han Solo in the same movie. I mean, this was, this was a dream come true back in the day. And this scene of course is really, um, yeah, is famous, great. And, um, you have this beautifully brick built car in here. I mean, the car alone uh, is worthwhile investing into the set. I'm not a big fan of the airplane. I think, first of all, I have a very different picture in mind looking back uh, or if, as far as I remember the movie. And yeah, I mean, we are used to Kobe um, fighter jets nowadays. So this one really looks a bit rough, a bit simple. Um, yeah, not a big fan, but I do love the minifigures. And the car is amazing as well. Let's move on. Uh, Escape from the Lost Tom. So that's again our first movie. I think a bit more at the end, if I recall correctly. Also going to be released April 1st, the 77013. It has 600 pieces and Lego is only asking for 40 bucks. That's six and a half cents a piece. This is a damn good price. I mean within the Lego universe, of course. And you have an amazing minifigure um, ensemble. I mean, it, just look at the three minifigures here on the right. I mean, all of them, again, printed legs, printed hips. I think this one here is even dual molded. Uh, it's just, and, and the mummy is, is just amazing. And I'm pretty sure a lot of folks, I mean, you, I, I'm really curious what this mummy is going to um, going to be long term on Bricklink, because I think there are a lot of folks who you know who have cool dioramas, cool mocks in mind with mummies, and this mummy is I think the highest quality mummy I've seen so far from Lego. So I'm pretty sure. Uh, people are willing to pay a hefty price for this one. However, so I do believe we will see this set a lot in, you know, uh, being parted out by Bricklink vendors. That's at least what I think be because of the minifigures, because you get four amazing minifigures for 35 bucks and good pieces in there as well, right? You have all the 10 bricks, etc. So that's, I think that's a part out champion here, right there. Anyhow, this thing has like a million stickers, which is unfortunate again. And I think they will be or quite important for the look and feel of the set, because I think especially the wall is going to be, look very boring. 
Um, obviously, if you're not a big fan of stickers, you could easily, you know, just throw in a couple more interesting building techniques, work with plates, plate modifieds, etc., and then get a nice wall as well. Uh, keep all the functionality um, of the set and, you know, just get rid of the stickers. But, I mean, let's see. Anyhow, this thing is really great. You have all the snakes in there. I think snakes are also quite pricey. So, like I said, this is a part of our champion right here. And you have cool, uh, pretty cool play functionalities, right? You have the statue that can can go down and um, yeah and and of course and you can I think there's even here a mechanism for you to throw out all the snakes, <laughs> which is cool. So yeah, it's a it's a great set. I mean, what's what's there to say? I mean, I think it's one of my favorites for sure for this week. Okay, let's move on to Star Wars, and here we have. Um, actually a curiosity. So Lego has announced and even put it on pre-order a new microfighter for the new Mandalorian TV series. So that is, I mean, obviously it's clear what they want to do, right? I mean, Mandalorian uh, season three is out right now. So I guess they want to, you know, make a quick buck here, but the set is not ready yet. So they put it on release August and then you can pre-order it. I mean, this is like five months from now. That's crazy. But I do believe they are just hoping that a couple of folks, you know, will click the button and, and give them maybe a better indication how many they have to make of these bad boys. But anyhow, it's 16 bucks for a microfighter. I mean, uh, what is my, my mouse pointer? Is doing something weird? Ah, here we go. So if we go back, I mean, let's we can compare this, I think, with the AT-80 versus Tauntaun, uh, which had also two, but two full minifigures. Great minifigures, actually. It was printed Alex and everything. So not just Grogu, because Grogu was not really a minifigure, right? And it had almost twice as... Um, two times as many pieces, right? So there was more on everything in the set. And Lego back in the day asked for the same 16 bucks as well, right? And in, over here, in, what is interesting, by the way, over here in Europe, it was even three bucks cheaper. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's I guess it's the typical Lego price, price hikes that we have seen recently, but I would say you get a lot less than you used to get from micro fighters in the, in the past, but you're paying the same price. And over here in Europe, it's even three bucks more, I think. I think the Tauntaun 8080 set was like 13 bucks, and and um, now the new micro fighter here is a 16 as well. Anyhow, um, for, of that, I'm not a big fan. Nevertheless, I think the N1 Starfighter is cool and it looks nice. And of course, Mando, you know, in his Beskar armor is always great. And Grogu is, is amazing as well. On the other hand, we have seen these two minifigures in so many sets, so not sure. Anyhow, let's move on to another set from the new Mandalorian uh, Season 3. And this is the Pirate Snub Fighter, the 75346. Going to be released May 1st. Obviously, that makes a lot more sense. And Lego is um, asking for 35 bucks US. And as you can see here down below, over here in Europe, uh, we have already a first um, retail um, shops um, uh, listing prices as well. So yeah, I, I'm I'm very aware, especially if you come from the US, that you are not you may not be aware that over here in Europe for Basically, all the sets that go into regular retail, usually you get them with, with a pretty large discount from uh, from Lego prices. So usually it's around 30%. So even now it's already, you know, 10 bucks down and, and this will this will go even lower. I'm personally, I think based on experience, this will be in the like 20 buck ballpark uh, long term. I, I don't know why this is different between North America and Europe, but that's actually a big difference that we have over here that retail goes far below. Uh, Lego's price. Anyhow, um, Snap Fighter, great minifigures. Again, a lot of detail, printed hips, printed legs. Uh, the hats I also really like. Um, it's, it's actually, the minifigures are amazing. The fighter, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's quite simple, right? I would, I would, I mean, it's, it's, it's well designed, it looks nice, but I think the real highlight of this one are the minifigures because they put so much detail in there. You have even a thermal detonator, I think, a one by one round tile in here. So this is all great. You have the um, the two by the two third a slope here with the printed um, interior for the for the fighter jet itself. So I think yeah, I mean it's 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 well done. 
personally, I'm not so sure many people will, you know, um, will will buy this because the scene. I mean, it's a cool scene from the from the first um, uh, from the beginning of of season three. But I mean, it's a very short scene, if I recall right. Personally, I would have preferred, but I don't want to spoil anything. But there is a very cool building. It's like almost like a palace or a castle that they show in in season three in the beginning. This is what I would love to see from Lego. Like, okay, throw in two thousand pieces and and make this castle because it's so cool. But anyhow. That's what we got. And then let's move on. The next gift was purchased. Uh, moving forward to Easter. Um, they uh, is announced as well. It's the 4587 by Lego. It's the Easter basket. Jace Brickbrock has already done a review. And it has 368 pieces. And I'm not 1% sure what the conditions are going to be. And, and also, you know, with the different shops. But usually, yeah. I guess you have to buy something for around 100 bucks or something, and then you will get this gift with purchase. Let's move on. Jurassic World, a ton of stuff has been announced um, by Lego. So let's get started. The 76960 are uh, going to be released June 1st, 512 pieces, 80 bucks. Uh, Brachiosaurus Discovery. Uh, by the way, I have no idea how these uh, Latin dinosaur names are pronounced in English, but. I mean, I don't even know how it's done in German, to be honest, but I would just read it the way I see it. Anyhow, obviously, with these sets, the, the core around is always the dino, right? And this is why they are so expensive, so it doesn't make much sense to look at price per piece. I mean, I will call them out um, like I do um, for every set, but like, but of course, it's around the dino. And the dino is looking, is looking nice. Um, I think it's well done. In addition, you have a jeep and you have a nice tree. In the tree, you have even dark green limb elements. You have a sand green... No olive green uh, limb elements as well, which I think is a great color scheme. Plus you don't see, plus you don't see them this this often. So yeah, long story short, you have of course three minifigures. Who do, who do we have in here? Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, and John Hammond. So I guess this is movie number one. I think, uh, isn't it? I think all of these sets are around um, the first movie, right? Anyhow, let's move on. Let's move into the World Visitor Center with T-Rex and Raptor Attack. So this could be related to the scene at the end of the first movie, if I recall correctly. Anyhow, this thing has two dinos, 693 pieces and six minifigures and even a skeleton diner. Dino, which is cool, which is brick built. Um, Lego is asking for 130 bucks, and I don't know, maybe it's just the way how they made the pictures, but I think these two dinos look really cool. We have a lot of different colors in here, different color schemes. Um, yes, you have the Raptor in there, you have the T Rex, and they look really great, personally. I think, I think they are, especially the T Rex from these, like, say, kind of dinos. Um, this is the most I don't know. This is maybe one of the coolest ones I've ever seen. Minifigures are good as well. Can't complain uh, around these. And the visitor center, I mean, yes, it has a ton of stickers again, but um, in general for these uh, Jurassic Park uh, play sets, um, I think they are quite okay as well. What I do really like is the skeleton dino. I mean, yes, it has a Technic pin in there. Uh, that is blue, which is very unfortunate. Um, still don't understand why Lego is doing that. So this Technic pin should definitely have been tan, maybe light bluish gray, but I mean, it should have been tan, right? This is what they should have done. But anyhow, here we go. Uh, six minifigures, two dinos in this set. And then we have the Velociraptor Escape. I mean, this is 40 bucks for only one dino, two minifigures, and 137 pieces. So from my point of view, that one has one of the worst perform price performance ratios. For me, this should be, I don't know, a, a $30 set, not 40 for sure, but we're talking about the 76957, the Velociraptor Escape. And then my personal favorite, but also not a cheap set, uh, the Triceratops, Triceratops? Triceratops. I will go with that. A research the 76959, uh, 281 pieces, but it has the dino and the dino looks really, really great. But what is even better around the set is, of course, you have the vehicle. 
I think this is ex more or less exactly the vehicle that we had in the T-Rex escape set. That's the one I mentioned when I talked about Indiana Jones and the plaque um, being a sticker back in the day. And um, it was very also unfortunate in this set that it was only one complete car in there. The other one was kind of broken because T-Rex was playing soccer with it. And, um, and there were not enough pieces in the set to make this a complete car as well. So for all of you back in the day who said, okay, this is very unfortunate. I want to extend this scene. I need more of these cars. Here you go. Now you have a set with the car and you have a great dyno and you have two nice minifigures. Um, so that's all great. 50 bucks, who um, these diners are really expensive. Um, but I mean, if you are interested in a smaller, maybe slightly cheaper diner, I think this one here has a much better price performance ratio, even if it doesn't look from the outside, because it's only 20 bucks and you get a car and you get a Dilophosaurus, Dilophosaurus, I will go with that. Um, it's a Jurassic World Dilophosaurus ambush, uh, 76958. And here's, what was this? Guy called again, Dennis, exactly. I mean, Dennis was, uh, if I recall correctly, he was the guy who basically was responsible for all the disaster of the first movie, at least in large parts. Maybe you shouldn't have recreated dinosaurs in the first place, but obviously all the accidents that happened after that was kind of his fault. He wanted to make money, you know, see something. But what is interesting here is that this can, it's like a soda can, if I recall correctly. I'm not 100% sure. It seems to be a printed piece. I'm not sure if it's new, but this looks great at least. But in general, you have a small dyno. You have a okay minifigure. I mean, no printed pants or legs, but okay. And you have a nice Jeep for 20 bucks. So that's not something to complain about and then let's move on we had super mario day i think and this is when lego announced this one here last week the 71423 super mario dry bowser castle battle expansion set which which an interesting name what an interesting name uh, august 1st going to be released i guess this one they just announced because there was mario day um, lego is asking for 110 bucks roughly for the 1321 pieces and you have a brick Bowser in here, like a skeleton version, which looks really cool and a little bit awful. Um, again, I, I think I've talked about this in the past. I've never played this Mario game, so I have no idea how good it is. I have no idea how good this expansion is by means of an expansion. But from a pure brick perspective, I really like the Bowser, which is pretty cool. Um, I also like many of the building techniques in here. I think they're also pretty good pieces. Uh, the chains, this, these enormous chain pieces are great. Never, I've never seen this building technique before. I mean, it's it's easy, it's simple, but nevertheless, I do really like it. This seems to be even kind of pearl silver, silverish, pearl dark silver, something like that. Uh, as a color, which looks amazing. So yeah, overall a nice set, but again, I'm not really into this Mario game, so not much I can say about it. So let's move on from Lego to Mold Kang. And here we have three new trains, all licensed as far as I can done, uh, tell or designed by Marble Man, uh, who actually has Actually, almost all of the um, of the Mold King trains in the past have been designed by Marble Man, to my knowledge. Anyhow, let's move on. Let's get started. So first, we have the DF4B. So that's a diesel electric locomotive from China. I think it has been. I uh, put. I uh, had some notes on this one. Yeah, it's it's still in production, to my knowledge, since 1984. They have made more than 4,500 or almost 4,500 of these bad boys. Um, this set here by uh, Mold Kang uh, is first of all in a junior series. So these are not eight stud trains like all the ones that they have done before, to my knowledge. Um, but these are six studs, and and as you can see from you know j being called the junior series, I guess it's you know it's it's targeted or aimed at at kids. Um, and we are actually talking about three sets today. So let's start with this one here, one thousand two hundred twelve pieces. So. Um, in China, you pay around 65 bucks for this one. So that's a slightly above three cents a piece. To my knowledge, yes, they are fully electrified. Um, I'm not sure. I Usually you have a remote, at least if I recall. I built only one uh, Mold King train, but back in the day it had a remote. For sure there is a smartphone app. At least that's what the, the package is saying. And um, I guess you also have a couple of tracks in there. Um, so yeah, here we go. 
it's actually a quite a nice set. You have uh, the locomotive itself, then you have a passenger car, as far as I can tell, it's a passenger car. And then with that, we're moving on to the high-speed train, the CRH 38A, no, 380A. Oh my god, that's complicated. 1000, um, no, we're talking about the 12021 from Mold King. It has 1211 pieces and it's 35 bucks. And this one for sure has also a setup of tracks included. The train itself is roughly 57 centimeters in length, six and a half width. Like I said, these are six star trains, so a lot smaller than what Blue Bricks, uh, what Mold King used to do in the past. And it's 13 and a half centimeters in height. And you have quite a large uh, track included as well. It's one 170 by 69 centimeters. So that's actually a lot of tracks. And I really like it. It's it's quite beautifully done. You have like a small train station included as well. So yeah, like I said, it's it's uh it's aimed at kids and, and there's everything in there that you need. Let's move on. And OBB, actually that's wrong. It's not OBB, it should be ÖBB because it's Österreichische Bundesbahn, I think. Austrian, Austrian, I don't know, um, train uh, company. Um, and we are talking about the 1189 here, an electric locomotive. Um, I think that's... A, Pretty old one. I think it's from the 60s. I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow, the uh, Mold King, especially, or I guess it was Marble Man, called out the number eight out of the from the 1189 series. I think they made nine of those. So they especially called out number eight. Not 100% sure why, but nevertheless, uh, the way here you go, we're talking about the 12023 from Mold King. It has only 919 pieces um, and it's. 57 uh, US dollars from China. I guess usually the prices that I call out here are including shipping to Europe, but obviously that depends on where you live. Also done by uh, Marble Man. Um, and the interesting is here, you have also tracks included, and this is a, what they call here the big band rail. So um, this is, I think, also interested, interesting for, for many folks because, I mean, these are not easy to come by. So basically you have tracks here, 173 by 173 circle um, centimeters. So that's quite cool. The locomotive itself is 48 centimeters in length, 13, almost 14 centimeters in height. And again, six width. Again, this is a six stud train. Pretty cool sets. So for all the train enthusiasts, especially for the ones who are interested in working stuff, but do not want to go into the eight stud um, territory because these things were really enormous. I mean, back in the day, let me just check. So I built... I built this one here, the 12007, and this thing is enormous. I mean, uh, it's, I mean, just the one locomotive with one passenger car is almost 90 centimeters. So <laughs> this thing is really, really huge. So that was, of course, uh, and I guess for many folks are saying, okay, this is too much for me. It has it had also lighting included. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's an amazing locomotive. Really loved it. But I think... Um, the such such enormous trains are not everyone's cup of tea. Let's move on to pan loss. And here we have an announcement by a German retailer, a Blue Bricks in this case, that they will get in stock the 673001. Haven't seen this one yet in, in with Chinese retailers, but I'm pretty sure this thing is in the market for quite some time because in a manual is already online available. Anyhow, um we will get this thing here in Europe and it has 1,314 pieces. Um, but obviously we do not know yet what the price is going to be. And the same is true for this uh, Narcissus. Narcissus. I have no idea how this is correctly pronounced actually. Uh, I think in German it's Narcissa. Not 100% sure. Anyhow, 92030A from Kisile. It has 830 pieces. It is a plant. Um, I've never built any of these Kisile um, plants, but friends of me have. And based on what I know, there's even some uh, there, there's even some scent um, included with the bricks, which I personally, I'm not sure if I would like that, but I'm, I, I have no confirmation this is the case with this set as well. Um, but what you do see is that it's 48 centimeters in height and 16 by 34. So that is not a small that set um, 
on its own. All right, moving on to Zembo, and here we have an entirely ser entire series um, from um, in in Chinese um, re with Chinese retailers, and it's called Sunny Sunny, I guess. And this is like a construction vehicles, utility vehicles, entire series. I think five sets um, are announced or are available now. So let's get started. So we have a concrete mixer, the seven one two O three seven, including a trailer. It has two. 1021 pieces and over in in China you can get it and again this usually includes shipping into Europe I think that's always the price that I take or pick um, it's around 100 bucks and it's quite enormous actually it's 61 centimeters in length uh, and 12 by 12 width and 16 centimeters in height so that's not as small as that and then you have a mine dump truck which I think looks also really great the 712023 it has 1,261 pieces. I do not have a scale. A couple of these other sets are marked as scaled, 1 to 26. But because this is a mine truck, um, this this thing f needs to be heavier. I mean, I, I guess it's I mean it's kind of minifigure scale, but obviously that's not a realistic scale. It's it's like a playset, right? Um, it is only 27 centimeters in length, uh, on 17 width and 14 and a half in height. And then you have a truck crane, uh, 712022, 991 pieces, and um, for 39 bucks. So that's that's a beauty as well. And then we have an excavator, around a thousand pieces. Like I said, this one is one to by 26 in scale. Um, it is roughly uh, 23 centimeters in height, uh, 33 um, depths, and 15 and a half in width. And I think it's a very nice done, well done um, excavator, right? A simple technique set, 39 bucks. I mean, what's not to like about this one? And then we have a wheel loader in the same scale, 896 pieces, $39 uh, US. Um, speaking of dollars, a quick hint. Bawea, one of my retail partners, you should find links uh, down below in the video description or in the podcast show notes for your listeners. Um, they currently have, um, I, and I actually don't know, how, don't know how long this will go, but they currently have a discount of 13%. They call it a daily discount, so I guess it's just today. Not 100% sure, but I mean, if you're quick enough, I think 30%, that's not too shabby. And with that, we are done with new sets, set updates, prices, etc. And let's move on to mocks of the week. And here we have uh, this week an amazing collection. Uh, one is uh, the Falconer's Fortress, a medieval castle by Gretje. Th this thing has 3,876 pieces. It's an alternate build, actually, and he's asking for 15 euros, and it's made out of three sets. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of these munched together big alternate build thingies because basically you have to throw in three sets and if you want to move on from this um, design and, you know, build something else and you have to split them or, you know, put, sort them and get them apart again. But if you're if this is your cup of tea, if you're interested in that, I think you have a great design here. Obviously, Gritje has done an, a huge amount of these alternate builds in the past, especially out of the medieval blacksmiths, the two ones. 325 was that? Which number was it? Yeah, 21325. So there's a ton of designs of alternate, of alternate designs from this one, but also from the from the castle. Here's for instance the river outpost. Amazing design. So many cool things coming um, from this designer, especially in the alternate um, ballpark. Actually, a lot of these designs have also been um, licensed to a Chinese company. So I think Urge, part of Zing, or to, I think that's a sister brand from Zing Bao, has uh, actually made a couple of these sets um, into products or alternate builds into full-blown products as well. Anyhow, let's move on. By Pandora's Box, that's actually a YouTube channel and a Brickling store over here in Germany. And um, what uh, Katrin, the CEO, has done here or published here is a new home. It's kind of a modular building, I would say. It has 3,907 pieces, so that's not a small one. She's asking for 20 euros, and it's a very detailed a design. I think she wrote down here below that this has not been test built by test built by now, but she has already ordered the pieces, so she's going to look into this. But I think, yeah, what's not to like about it? it's very detailed. All the floors are tiled. 
Um, there's our, however, on the other hand, a lot of building techniques that we know from other sets, including Lego, which I think is, is not bad news. Um, there's, a, for instance, this a bat looks a little bit like, for instance, again, the medieval blacksmith, right? The bat was very similar, which I think is great, right? Then, then you see other building techniques that we know, for instance, from Ideas Treehouse. Uh, she put a lot of um, printed pieces in there as well. So it's, it's really a beautiful design. I really like it. And then uh, let's come to one of my favorites of this week. Um, Chris Romance has done another mini build. And this week, of course, 10316 Rivendell. Um, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, and again, my apologies, Rivendell was the reason why I didn't have the time last week to produce this show. And um, like I said, it's my personal favorite. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the best Lego set I have ever built. And I uh, and I think Chris Romans has done an amazing job here. I really like that, um, that they used the building technique from the roof. And, and basically, I mean, this set, of course, has a completely different scale. But, you know, just reusing the building technique from Lego is just great. Um, you know, you immediately, um, you can immediately see it and, and, and have this this great relationship with the original set. Um, but all in all, I would say, great job. Actually, Rivendell is, is 50 centimeters behind me right now. And, you know, looking back, it looks very similar. It's well done again. And of course, I mean, Rivendell is not a cheap set. This thing here has slightly below 1,200 pieces. It's small pieces. So obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper to build this one. And may, you may not even have the space for Rivendell. Anyhow, six pound 50. Uh, great design. And then let's move on to the Lego store by Lord Bricker. So this is pretty cool. Um, I mean, literally, it is a Lego store and it's like half a modular building, which is really, really cool. I mean, of course, there was the Lego mod the Lego store in as a full-blown modular building is part of the Brickling Designer Program. I think Wave 1, if I recall correctly. However, it's Brickling Designer Program, so... You know, it's limited and it's quite expensive to get this one nowadays. So here you have an interesting mock as an alternative, which at least from the building techniques on the inside is not that different. What is really cool about this one, though, is also that, first of all, it's half a modular. So it's 16 by 32 studs. So, you know, you can just put it in between two modulars. I mean, if you look at Lego's bookstore, for instance, which had also two uh, two pieces in it, you could easily combine it. And there are also alternate builds to basically rebuild police station, for instance, in basically two 16 stud wide um, sub modulars or whatever you might call it. So this thing could fit really, really well with these. But because it's only six studs wide, it's not that deep. I think it's maybe like around 18, 19 studs. You could also rebuild this and just make a small building out of it that could fit on a shelf that is not deep enough for a full-blown modular, right? If you have tiny shelves and it should fit very well, for instance, with small buildings like the ones that Akeda has done with the Axis Handbox designs. So whatever it is, I mean, there are different brands that have made these small buildings, even uh, Lego's uh, Creator 3-in-1, some of these smaller buildings. So if this is more your cup of tea, you don't want to go full-blown modular because you don't have the space or you just don't look like these enormous buildings, this one could be uh, quite interesting as well. In general, I think it's also a nice design, should be relatively easy to build and easy to get the pieces because they all look quite standard and quite simple. And then we have a trebuchet by Edge of Bricks. Um, um, basically, yeah, based on what he said here, okay, he has done um, siege machines uh, in the past, and this is now a new approach. And I think, yeah, for all of you who have, for instance, I don't know, built the Lion Knight's castle, and now you don't want to move on. I've talked in the in recent months here in this show. Um, about, you know, talked about many interesting mock designs around Lion Knight's castle. And this one here, I think, is a great extension as well. Especially, you know, if you want to have a siege around Lion Knight's castle, then, you know, what's better to have than a trebuchet that, to my knowledge, actually even works, which is really, really cool. It only has um, 699 pieces. I think you should it should be really, relatively easy to get these. Um, so, yeah, eight bucks for the manual. Let's go. And then we have from Brickwood creations i think i've built some of her designs in the past really love them and this one here is also quite interesting so what this is again the medieval blacksmith set the 21325 
Um, it's basically an alternate build. And the idea is um, that she had is to compress all the important characteristics of this set into a smaller, into a smaller piece and then make it a pencil pot, um, which you can, it's on her desk. You can see this here, like, you know, it was a picture. Yes. And you can put your pencils in. I mean, the only thing, I don't know how it is for you, but I'm not using that many pencils anymore nowadays. But in the past, when I had pencil pots on my desk, um, Actually, they look like garbage after a couple of years uh, of usage. So I'm not born a person, especially on the inside, right? You had like all this dust in there and then you had like sometimes some color in there and, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, uh, it was quite nasty and I don't want to have this in my bricks, I sank. So maybe it is a good idea to put something in on the inside, like, I don't know, some old Tupperware or something like that uh, to protect your pieces. But nevertheless, I really love the idea. Uh, awesome design. And speaking of awesome design, let's move on to um, a couple of Battle Max. Um, actually, this is from Mac Warrior, of course, or from, from Battletech, if I recall correctly. So I was a huge fan, I don't know, back in the 90s. We played this actually on a regular basis. But yeah, I've been out of this scene or this topic for quite a while. Nevertheless, Canuck 33 has done, I think, two designs. I think it's two Max, the Nova, Blackhawk, and the Storm Crow. Yo Ryokan? Ryokan? I don't know, 1% sure. Really great designs. So we have the Black Arm, Black Hawk torso plus arms. I mean, there are a couple of different variants how you can buy these, but in a nutshell, you have these two Max. I'm not 1% sure if I really love the color scheme. I mean, it's like modern science fiction, but obviously you can switch these to other colors as well, right? If you want to go more in the grayish or olive green, um, like camouflage kind of paint. I mean, there's um, it's a mock, so you can do whatever you want. Awesome designs by Canox33. And then let's move on to a design that is actually free of charge by Bean Beanus. Bean Beanus? I wasn't present sure if I got this one right. Five, 1,516 pieces has the Lime Street Bakery La Segunda. And it's free of charge. And it's a nice, beautiful, well done, beautiful design. Um, personally, I really like all the details uh, in the design. The bakery is actually outside, which is interesting. And then you have a building, a small house next to it. And like I said, I mean, if if this is something you, you have not done before, like building a, um, a nice mock from Rebrickable, I guess this could be a great entry point because this thing will, will look nicely everywhere. Obviously, you could um, use a different floor design here. So this is, of course, designed... Um, um, so for, I don't know, you could put, you can do just regular plates, a uh, single layer of plates, or just, you know, use maybe even 32 or 16 by 16 base plates from, from the back from the day. So, I mean, there are different options, um, how you, how you do the lower part here, but in general, yeah, really beautiful design, great roof design as well. What's not to like? With that, we are done with mocks of the week. Let's move on to Lego Ideas. Because I haven't covered Lego Ideas quite a while, I may have missed a couple of designs. But we were just, I mean, I just picked three for this week. That is, again, the, the designs I'm talking about in this part of the news show is usually new designs that have made the 10,000 supporters, which basically means it's going to be considered by the Lego Ideas team to be picked in one of the, I think they have two waves per year, or is it three nowadays? No percent sure. Usually it's around 30 to 40 uh, designs that make the 10,000 supporters, and then Lego usually picks around two um, on average, I would say, actually making uh, Lego idea sets out of them. Anyhow, let's get started. The Robotic Mac Factory. Really like this one. Great minifigure selection and a great idea to create this small box. Um, and I think, I don't know, has the designer said anything around how many pieces it is? It looks like it's almost 3,000. 3,000 is the limit for an ideas entry. What I also really like here is that this thing has been built. So it's not just designer, but this is actually brick build, which I always pref um, prefer. It's beautifully done, very colorful. I mean, they even use brick separators as, as decoration here, which is great. Uh, and yeah. Great, great idea. And then we have this scream, which of course is a painting from Edward Munch. Munch? Munch? Edward Munch? I think is the correct pronunciation. I think it's it's 130 years old. And of course, it's a new 
picture. I mean, Lego has done a couple of these in the past. I'm not sure if they will do the scream. What I found especially interesting around this one here is how enormous it is. It has 2,999 pieces. Like I said, 3,000 is the limit. So the, this designer here, Spacemanship, put everything into this design that he or she could. And yeah, it's actually, it's quite accurate, actually. I've seen pictures of this one. I think it's, yeah, amazing, amazing design. And then let's move on to my personal favorite, uh, the portal gun. From... Uh, Portal 2, the quantum tunneling device, the portal gun. Um, actually, I think if you don't know the game, this thing looks like a weird insect. Um, but Hooded Blaze has done, I think, a pretty pretty good representation in, in bricks. For this one, I'm not sure if LEGO will actually ever do it, especially considering that it looks like a weird insect. But of course, um, Portal 2 or Portal 1, for that matter, is loved by many. And here you go you have the portal gun. All right, I hope you like the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better subscribe to the channel. For you podcast listeners, please leave a review, comment or like on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next week.